question of the day with uh, Mark Mowry and so. So thank you. Okay, welcome back after lunch. Um, I'm Marco Mauri, postdoc in Rosalind Allen's uh, lab in uh, Jena before we were in uh, Edinburgh. So we moved recently to Jena. And today I'm going to present something regarding uh, uh, algae and bacteria interaction. So dynamics of algae bacteria interaction in artificial plankton communities. Uh, first of all, something regarding Jena because uh, last week many people asked where is Jena. So Jena is a small city in the middle of uh, Germany in the east part and is actually surrounded by now we'll try to move the mouse, it works, yes. Surrounded by nature, so very nice. And uh, in Yena, there is this balance of the microverse. It's an excellent cluster, recently established. And the idea is to gather together different, different uh, expertise uh, to study principle and, and interaction of different microbial communities. So uh, we study, for example, microbial communities from the gut, uh, in uh, water, soil, plants, uh, and how human interact with them and how they interact with each other. So Metan uh, is our embedded environment and uh, our group actually focuses on different uh, uh, topics with different scales. So these are just some topics in which I'm involved to. Uh, we study individual microbes. For example, we are interested in uh, antimicrobial resistance specifically. Uh, so we do modeling at the level of uh, micro scales. We study all the also microbial communities. Uh, here you see, for example, uh, amoeba that are interacting with uh, E. coli cells. And then we scale up also to uh, population of microbes, for example, uh, biofilms. And inside this cluster, we had the possibility to interact with other people from other groups. Actually, the co connection and the exchanges are really, uh, really nice uh, established. And uh, uh, this group from Georg Ponert works uh, with uh, algae. They are expert in uh, understanding the chemical signal signals that shape the interaction between algae and, uh, and bacteria, uh, especially in aquatic environment. So uh, they take care of uh, studying this kind of uh, stuff, so algae and the chemical released in the, in the water. And uh, this time I'm talking about these small algae that are unicellular algae that were already mentioned this morning and they are diatoms. So basically they have an exos exoskeleton uh, uh, that, I mean, uh, constrain the, the algae to be unicellular, and uh, yeah, they can f do photosynthesis and create uh, uh, biomass from, from that. So why are they important? So also this morning was already mentioned something. Uh, they are in uh, a soup of uh, 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 microorganism called phytoplankton. So these phytoplankton are made by unicellular algae and not only because there are also bacteria with them. So they actually interact a lot. They are important because they fix up to 30% of the global CO2 into nutrients. This morning they said 20%, actually I mean it's just an estimate. And this fixation after is able to fuel the uh, marine food web. So it's uh, the basis of the um, food web in a marine environment. Algae have a uh, uh, peculiar uh, characteristic, so because they change uh, the cycle over uh, the different seasons, and uh, this uh, cycling is made by a uh, blooming part after they kind of die, they uh, go up a little bit during the summer, and uh, they do the same in winter, uh, they die out, and they start again the cycle the next year. So this one depends obviously from uh, uh, some uh, abiotic condition like light and other nutrients that are around, and also diatom have a life cycle. And it's quite interesting and uh, visible because diatom also change color over, over the uh, life cycle. So they start uh, uh, with a light green color, and if you measure the chlorophyll content that is represented here over time, you see that they have an exponential phase, exactly like bacteria do, and then uh, they decay, uh, in a death phase or late exponential phase, depending on how they, they go up or down, depending on the condition. And uh, when they age, they change the color to brown. So this is because the chlorophyll changes the uh, functionality inside the cell. And we are basing our research at the moment, so what we'll see in the next, uh, upon measuring this chlorophyll content. And because this one is more or less a proxy of the biomass of the algae. Okay, so chlorophyll content uh, is related to the amount of algae that you have in, the, in your system. And uh, some motivation regarding the, this kind of talk. So 
as I told you, this group study uh, samples from marine water, uh, taken in Germany especially, from a, a consortium called Aquadiva, very similar to Tara Ocean, the same stuff. And uh, uh, they sample uh, this uh, uh, water and they found uh, that there are obviously algae and bacteria interacting, living together. And we are interested in the composition of this uh, uh, environment that is actually complex because there are many players together and the interaction that defines this composition, which are the interaction. The interaction can be interaction within the same species or be between bacteria and algae. So for example, uh, they compete for the same nutrients uh, in uh, bacteria compete for the same nutrient and the same happens also in, uh, uh, among algae. And they have exchanges. Exchanges that can be positive or negative. For example, algae are giving carbon sources to nutrients to grow. The same happens also in, uh, for uh, uh, bacteria that provides other uh, micronutrients to the uh, algae. Most of them metabolites. And in some cases, there are also negative uh, repression in which bacteria would like to get rid of algae. So they promote something to uh, downregulate the growth of the algae. And the idea is to understand uh, this kind of interaction. Obviously, ah, yeah, a question, sorry. Um, so they don't um, compete for the same nutrient sources. It's always like uh, carbon source are always flowing from the phytoplankton to the bacteria. No, that's not completely true. OK, most of the time, uh, they have a common source of carbon. Uh, but really depends on the species that you look at. Uh, well, bacteria. Uh, prefer obviously glucose species or uh, all this stuff that contain a lot of uh, carbon. And uh, while uh, algae are able also to uh, rely on light, obviously, so that might be a difference. But when the neutrons are actually not enough or when light is not enough, uh, they can compete for the same. Yeah. Actually, phytoplankton uh, uses a lot of uh, other stuff, so complex nutrients that are more uh, difficult to be uh, internalized by bacteria. So can be a competitive uh, process also. Uh, OK, so we are interested in this kind of interaction. And uh, the idea was, uh, let's get simple. So uh, sample something from the water, uh, extract what we need, and reproduce it in the lab. Uh, it's not so easy, uh, because uh, this kind of stuff grow in very complex media. And uh, we are not able to grow in uh, the well-established media that went in the lab. So usually you do an extraction of uh, uh, marine water, you purify it, and you use it uh, independently of what's inside uh, to make them grow. And uh, to study the, the kind of this simple system to understand what are the kind of uh, influences on each other. We have a couple of questions to understand to, to, that you like to answer. And uh, obviously, is. Uh, uh, regarding the interaction. Secondly, the dynamics, that is something also not so easy in this case because the communities are quite complex. And uh, um, the first question that uh, was moving this kind of research uh, is a common belief that was uh, there in the, in the field that this kind of algae, especially diatoms, have a, a universal role. What does it mean universal? It means that if you take one specific uh, uh, diatom, this one will have always a positive or a negative effect on uh, this specific bacteria. And the bacteria does the same uh, on an algae. Obviously, if you think a little bit, uh, it's very difficult that they might have the same universal behavior. And uh, to test whether it was real or not, we went on with our experiments. Well, I can already tell you that there is not, it's not universal. So I mean, it's not so difficult to guess it. So it's a work in progress because we started last year. We just published the first result at the end of last year. And uh, now uh, we are transiting from uh, the more experimental uh, methods to uh, the theoretical and uh, the uh, modeling part. So I will give you just a glimpse uh, of the initial part, not everything. Uh, what is the research method that we are using? Uh, if I'm late, just tell me stop. A okay. couple of minutes before. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so, research methods are the following. First of all, as I told you, they screen uh, by sampling in uh, marine water for relevant bacterial interaction. Why they have to screen? Because not all of them are able to, work, to, uh, to grow in the lab. Uh, they request a lot of specific abiotic condition, temperature, uh, and shaking condition of salt, and so on, that are not, uh, not very known. 
And you have to screen also because uh, uh, you don't know what you pick up from the water. So there are many bacteria that you have no idea what they are. They are difficult to identify. And the same also happens for algae. Although algae are actually much easier because uh, they're big. So you can see them in the, under the microscope. They go from 10 to 100 microns. So actually, you don't really need to uh, do specific uh, uh, processes to identify them. While for bacteria, it's much more complex. And then uh, we did uh, uh, a choice of uh, four bacteria and one uh, diatom. And we did growth curves. First of all, of isolated uh, culture. So one bacteria alone, one, ba one bacterial species alone, and one uh, diatom species alone. With the same medium, obviously. And then we did the pairwise culture, OK? So you might already guess where we are going to. So kind of lot of alter idea. And um, after, the idea is uh, actually develop a mathematical model to predict the community dynamics. And from this one, you would like to understand what happens if you put together all these stuff. So the four different bacteria and the diatom. Uh, once we understand how they grow in uh, isolation and pairwise, we should be able to predict what's going on uh, for the whole community. So we are creating artificial community, inferring some properties by uh, the single growth curve and pairwise growth curves. How we did this stuff? So it's actually a huge work. So something like six, six years of work on, uh, on these things, because uh, growing in, uh, in lab, these, uh, these bugs are complex. And uh, this one was done by uh, Yun Deng, a postdoc in a Georg Koner lab. And what he did was to, uh, first of all, uh, check the growth of the, of the diatom. Uh, how you do it, I already told you. Basically, you measure the, shall I move this stuff? Yeah, yeah. The chlorophyll content in uh, the algae uh, over the time. So this one could be a kind of curve that you obtain. Uh, and uh, you do the same in the presence of bacteria. So the black one is uh, in the absence of uh, bacteria, in the presence of bacteria, since there is an interaction. Uh, can have a different change. Basically, the chlorophyll content gives you a, a proxy for the number of cells that you have, number of diatoms that you have, okay? And what you would like to do is to compare uh, the case with and without bacteria into different uh, time points. Why that? Because there are different, obviously, um, phase, one uh, growth phase here and one uh, death phase here. And so you measure just basically the difference between uh, this point and this point with and without bacteria, and you say there is a positive or negative interaction. So it's a yes, no answer at the moment. Once you do it, you obtain something like that. So they did it for, uh, you did it for uh, many different algae, different uh, diatoms that you see here in uh, uh, comparison with uh, other bacteria that usually lives in the same environment. For the growth phase, uh, that is actually this one, and the late stationary or death phase, that is actually this one. And uh, if you see uh, yellow, means that the interaction is positive, so the bacteria is helping in uh, uh, growing the algae. Negative means that the presence of bacteria represses the algae. And uh, as already seen uh, from uh, this kind of, uh, uh, it's not random, but I mean, it looks like random metrics, uh, this one is different from this one, uh, so you already see that probably there is no universality for two reasons. The first one is that a single uh, bacteria or a single algae is not uh, giving the same effect uh, on the other partner every time, so you see, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I was wondering about this, this measure, right, because the way it's drawn, it suggests that you always take it at particular times. But yeah. you could imagine that when they're together, the time dynamics just is yeah. shifted or trend scaled in some way. And, and then it's sort of hard for me to say what can happen in your That's matrix, totally true. Even, even if they go up and down the same height. That's totally true. So they choose uh, for different couples, uh, always the same time. Basically, the one in which uh, we saw that most of them were in the exponential phase, so make it more comparable. But you are taught in the, the other one uh, at fixed time independently whether they are dying or not. So, uh, but yeah, you, you, are, you are right. So it's difficult to, to infer the same uh, uh, general condition. Uh, they just took a single time point to, be, to have a first screen understanding which uh, bacteria and which algae they should uh, decide to take in the experiment later. So it was a first screening. But, yeah, I mean, it's just a proxy to have an idea. 
I agree that is uh, not the best option, but they have a dynamics, complex dynamics, but Bison is uh, shifted after in the idea of studying. Yeah. So I was saying that you see already that uh, a single algae or a single bacteria are not uh, having a complete yellow or a complete blue row or column. Uh, so Bison means already that there is no uh, universal effect on uh, the species, but the uh, effect depends on the given bacteria or the given algal partner. And then you see also that, can I switch? Oh, here, yeah, exactly. So if you compare some of them, for example, year to year, you see that from the early growth phase to the late growth phase, uh, you go from blue to negative to yellow. Positive means that the behavior changes most of the time also during the uh, two phases. And so depends uh, the dynamics and the, uh, the effect on the uh, growth phase uh, that you're looking at. So after Vision, they choose uh, the most representative, uh, um, actually they're not the most representative, but they are the ones that are easy to collect in the, and make it grow in the lab. Uh, that are the algae Cosinodiscus radiatus, that I will call diatom because I'm not able to, uh, yeah, there's a question. Uh, is, sorry, this, that it becomes more positive, generally, the interaction. Do you think that's just because there's more algae dying and there's more bursts, or am I completely missing something? We, we don't know what is actually. We don't know whether it is dying or decreasing for other reason. Especially algae have a kind of exoskeleton, exoskeletron, so uh, you don't know whether... Uh, I mean, even if it dies, it stays bare algae because it's kind of empty. You just have to measure the chlorophyll to see whether it's dead or not. We don't know why it happens. We don't know only that in the culture, if you sample and you measure it, you see less chlorophyll. We don't know what's so you, going on. But if you do a live dead stain of the algae or a count, I don't know. We counted in the microscope. That's how we did it. So basically, you see uh, an algae, whether it's uh, dead or alive, from the color. And you can already infer uh, how many cells are there. And uh, yeah, that's what is done. So what question, your question was whether they are dying, so removing, or maybe they are uh, uh, sedimenting, or maybe they are uh, uh, keeping fixed the number of cells. So we, we, we don't know, because this stuff uh, is happening in a flask, and after we sample out at two time point. We are not monitoring everything over, over time completely, but only these two time points. And so it's difficult to infer what is going on in between. And I think also reason is the same question that you had before, so I can kind of connect it to. Yeah, another word? Are uh, the microbes uh, allowed to change the pH or is the media buffered? Uh, okay, the media is very complex. Actually, I don't know uh, the answer precisely, but um, I don't think it's buffered, no. It's just an extraction of marine water, whatever it is inside, because whenever you modify it, they tend not to grow. Uh, and regarding what's going on with bacteria and algae is what we are doing now. So we are actually taking also extract of media and uh, looking at the metabolites, the properties, to understand what's going on. So I cannot give you an answer for, for that another moment. Another bear? No. Leonardo? So, sorry, I don't think I understood. So you're using like filter seawater or synthetic medium for these experiments? Uh, I think it's filter, filter, yes. Okay, okay. Yeah. No, no, I mean, well, synthetic, you would know what's going on inside them. You know all the components. Here, we are not sure about everything. Uh, yeah? So here are the names that we chose, sorry, what's going on here, Bison. Uh, so the diatom is uh, Cosinodiscus radiatus, just to give you a name. And the four bacteria are uh, called for short, CS4, Rose A1, Rose A1, and CS1, okay? So I won't give you the name for long because I don't remember them. Yeah, so and it's also quite exciting to do in Yena because uh, the first guy, I mean, one of the first guys that uh, systematically 
inspect and describe the shape of the diatom was uh, Ernst Haeckel, and he lived in Jena, operated in Jena, studied there. So it's quite connected also to the environment inside Jena. And uh, so how uh, Jung did uh, this kind of experiment, basically I already told you more or less what's going on. So first of all, he grows separately uh, the algae and the bacteria in the same medium. Uh, here you see uh, on the x-axis the days uh, of inoculation inside uh, the medium. So basically we grow in the medium, we sample out, we count under the microscope the number of algae alive and also dead, looking at the color of the, of the algae by eye. And um, here you can see the number of cells, uh, so the concentration. And this curve in uh, uh, orange, that is the same curve in all these four plots, is the case when algae are growing alone, okay? So we are just reproduce four plots with the same uh, uh, curve, just to give a uh, guide for the eye. And then you do the same by adding bacteria and counting again the number of cells over time, of the uh, diatoms. And for example, when you add CS4, you see that this uh, is the count of uh, uh, algae in uh, green, this one in yellow is again the count of algae, this one in red, and this one in uh, violet, I think, uh, with the presence of a different four bacteria. You can count also bacteria, obviously. So uh, this is done by uh, qPCR, so it's quite complex. Uh, it was difficult to make a standard, so that's why you see up and down in the curves. And here you measure the amount of bacteria, actually the concentration, and over time, in gray, again, the bacteria alone, so CS4, uh, cross A1, uh, rose A1, and CS1 alone, in gray. And uh, with the presence of the algae, you can uh, measure again bacteria, and you see that you obtain this green, yellow, uh, red, and violet counting. What you can notice already from the, this kind of plot is quite clear. So uh, here, when you add bacteria to the algae, uh, algae are, gro are growing better, so they are rescued in the death phase. Here instead, when you add algae, this guy is uh, basically killing, uh, cross one is killing the, partially the growth of the, of the algae. This one again is increasing, this one is doing something very crazy that we are not really able to understand at the moment, we have some hints. Uh, it's shifting the starting point of the uh, growth. And uh, also for bacteria, this one happens, it's a little bit more difficult to understand what's going on. Uh, but this one is very clear, so basically this bacterium is not able to grow uh, without algae, but in the presence of algae, uh, is able to grow. So probably algae are supplying something to, uh, necessary to the growth of bacteria. Uh, so they have different growth dynamics, obviously, and depends also on the uh, algal aging, because you see that, for example, this rescue doesn't happen here, but only on this late uh, phase. And this one is something that we already knew from uh, the first, uh, uh, very first inspection. Now, going to the model, very simple, Lotka Volterra. So we discussed a lot about uh, Lotka Volterra last week. I don't go uh, in uh, detail uh, why it's good or not. Was the only option that we had, obviously, because we don't know anything regarding the physiology of this stuff, okay? So we know something regarding the algae. We don't know much about this kind of bacteria, uh, about the specific physiology, about the metabolites that are uh, released. And so we use a lot of Volterra model uh, just to give you an idea. Again, there are uh, the four different bacteria that interact with the diatom. X is the density of the cell, and then you have a growth rate, the interaction term that are divided between self-interaction and pairwise interaction. And uh, uh, you can, uh, I mean, you know already that if a term is positive, means that uh, there is a positive interaction, so one enhances the other one. Negative, there is a repression, and uh, zero means uh, that there is no interaction. So from fit of uh, axenic culture, so culture alone, growing alone, you obtain uh, the growth rate and the self-interaction term, nothing special. From fit of a pairwise culture, you obtain uh, the interaction terms. And uh, here there is also kind of a trick, because we have to include a carry capacity for the algae. Apparently, uh, they, have, uh, uh, they are uh, they are using a lot of nutrients, so we had to, to fix uh, uh, the amount of carrying capacity that they reached. And uh, once you do that, you obtain this kind of uh, interaction. So apparently CS4 and diatom are repressing each other. Rose A1 is uh, helping diatom to grow. That, uh, diatom helps cross A1. 
and CS1 uh, interact negatively with the diatom. So these are the main interaction. And uh, as I told you, there are two set of parameters because we have a condition for the early growth phase and the late stationary phase uh, that are different. Uh, especially in the late stationary phase, it's quite boring. Nothing happens apart from rose one that is uh, repressing the diatom. And uh, now the question is, uh, what happens if you put actually all together this stuff uh, and the diatom? Is the model uh, representing uh, well the, the data? So this one was just the um, fitting of the model and the prediction of the model, but we have not tested yet, so you can test it. And here I represent it again, once more. Uh, the matrix of interaction here, times after inoculation of the algae uh, alone or bacteria and algae. In this case, it's just uh, algae alone, so just to guide the eye for you. And then you have here the number of algae. Okay, so this one again is the fit of the diatom in absence of algae. Sorry, in absence of a bacteria. And uh, when you put instead all the bacteria together with the algae, the model gives this prediction in black and the measurements gave this uh, dotted line. So actually we can see that uh, they're quite in good agreement. So Lotka Volterra here uh, works pretty nicely. And to be sure, we also did, uh, um, uh, okay, here is another stuff, yeah. Um, first of all, we have also to say that uh, um, there are no interaction between uh, bacteria bacteria, so no, no higher order interaction. And since the model already fit very nicely, the, the data we think that probably pairwise interaction are uh, negligible, although the kind of error that you have are not really able to distinguish between the two cases probably, even if the, the bacteria have very weak interaction, you cannot see them. Then we check that Neutral case, so no interaction gave uh, a completely different as well in the, the green one here. And finally, uh, you can actually divide the, the system in uh, excluding all the interaction but two, and are these uh, CS1 and this cross A1. So this arrow and this arrow are already able uh, to give this magenta line that is very, ni very uh, nicely uh, next to the uh, black line with all the interactions. So only two are leading the dynamics and actually are the faster growers. So you can do the same for bacteria. We can give a prediction for the growth of bacteria because you can also measure them. I don't know what's happening here. Uh, these are the prediction of the model in solid line and the measurement with qPCR are the dotted line. So we are more or less in the, less in the same hierarchy. Since we are uh, out of time, I will give you also the summary. So here we studied the algae-bacteria interaction. Uh, they don't present any universal uh, effect. The community dynamic depends on the growth phase of the algae. And the outlook, I can also give you an hint about the outlook. We would like to investigate the communities that are more similar to the natural one. Uh, but to do that one, we have to understand better the physiology of algae, the physiology of bacteria, and what they, uh, how they interact, so what they exchange. And that's why uh, the group of Pornert is actually the best place to be, because they are able to measure all the metabolites inside the, the system. And just to give you an idea, uh, that's the last slide. Uh, the, um, uh, the model works more or less in, the, in the, this way. I mean, we are already... Uh, on the mathematical part, but I won't present the result about this one. So basically algae are uh, uh, using some nutrients, uh, uh, nitrogen, silicate especially, and light, and they release uh, some substrate that is used by bacteria. So bacteria is able to grow in this substrate, but over time algae are dying, so they age, and they produce less and less nutrient. They start dying, so bacteria at this point are not receiving any substrate, they are unhappy, they start dying too. And, but bacteria are not stupid they release some metabolites that stimulate algae to produce some vesicle that shuttle out some, uh, um, actually are uh, redox, uh, product of redox stuff in, uh, in the algae. So basically you get rid of, uh, of what makes you old and they get back to be uh, younger. At this point they are able to produce more substrate and the bacteria are happy again and they stop in uh, producing the metabolites. So this one is kind of a uh, loop obviously depend on the algae bacteria that you have. We are investigating the, the specific substrate and metabolite that are released. Uh, so 
as I told you, is a work in progress. With this, and I would like to acknowledge the people who work with me, so in Jena, in uh, Max Planck uh, for Chemical Ecology, still in Jena, our funding agency, and I would like to advertise something, so we have a uh, uh, Twitter, Theoretical Biophysics. Uh, we have also a, a podcast, so if people would like to listen to the podcast and participate and help us in uh, enlarging this community, it would be very nice. And we have also a Population Dynamics uh, virtual seminar every uh, uh, three weeks uh, online, open to everyone. Uh, I know that already some of the people here already had uh, uh, subscribed and other were speaker by us. So this stuff is actually published in uh, this paper, and we uh, would like also to say, say that next week, no, in two weeks, 90th anyway. Uh, we have uh, this uh, uh, small uh, one-day seminar in, uh, uh, one-day symposium in Jena, New Frontiers in Modern Ecology and Evolution of microbi Microbiomes. You can uh, come to Jena, or it's for free, or you can uh, follow it online. And for example, Jacopo will be one of the invited speakers. Uh, so with this, I would like to thank you for the attention. There are any more questions? Yeah, it's very short. Um, I know nothing about algae, but I was wondering, in your natural samples, do you see your microorganisms in like agglomerates, in clusters, or do they swim freely? I don't know. But I, I'm not done the experiment. I've not seen it. I've seen just what happened after. Uh, I, I know that actually in the, the theory is that in marine water, since uh, nutrients are so diffuse and uh, so uh, light in concentration, you must have agglomeration of uh, algae and bacteria because uh, in the other case, uh, nutrients would be too much uh, uh, dispersed and not usable. So for sure, there are agglomeration, and this, the basic idea of this phytoplankton is that one. Uh, I don't know if you sample it and you put it in a microscope immediately, you see it. They don't create clustering cells of biofilms or uh, uh, snowflakes or this stuff. So that's okay, not. so the follow-up question is that if you just like you did not observe this forming no. in your artificial... Actually, body. everything is very well shaked there. So there is a reason, and the reason is to uh, keep it simple at the moment, yes. Thank you. Uh, just a um, couple of questions. One is uh, regarding the modeling. So you do put bacteria-bacteria interactions, and they turn out to be negligible? Uh, okay, no, I've not put it. I tried okay. to put it. Okay. It was not fitting uh, in any sense because uh, it was overfitting. Oh, okay. Uh, so I cannot see any... Given the error that we have, I cannot distinguish them. So okay. it's already done and fine in that way. We said, no, maybe it's not useful to put it in. Okay. The, the other see. thing is, since in these experiments... I know you haven't done the experiments. Yeah, yeah but, <laughs> but since in these experiments you're using filter seawater, so there's a possibility that this filter seawater contains lots of phages that might affect the bacteria. They, How... they, they purified before in that case. Yeah, they, they get rid of... Uh, of the phages. Of yes, okay, okay. they get rid of it, yes. One more question? I don't know. <laughs> How can? No, I don't know. I have no idea. I have no idea. I can, I can ask and tell you, but I don't know. Oh, okay. I, I know that there is a part of microfiltration uh, several times, uh, several uh, layers of microfiltration, but I don't know after how they get, get rid of all this living and interacting stuff. I, I can ask. Right. Thanks. The speaker again.